before writing any test, it's important to always have the Firestore emulator running in the background. You can run the emulators from the command line by running Firebase emulators colon start. That should bring up the emulator UI on localhost 4000, and by default, it'll be hosting Firestore on localhost 8080. Now in our rules.test file, we can start writing out the actual test that we want to define. The first thing I want to test is that Firestore denies when reading an unauthorized collection. That should be anything in the database that's not explicitly allowed. Next, we'll test that the database allows admins to read published posts, and that the database allows admins to update posts of other users. There's obviously many other things we could test here, but this will give you the gist of how unit testing works with Firestore rules. Now, before we go any further, we'll need some mock data. We'll need a logged in user, as well as some data in the database. We can represent that data with a plain JavaScript object. The only thing we need for a mock user is a user ID. By initializing the app with a mock user, we'll have an authenticated user for our rules with this user ID. From there, we'll create mock data from Firestore, where each key in this object represents a path to the database. So the first path is users slash Bob. And notice how Bob matches the user ID of the mock user. We'll give Bob a role of admin to check our admin capabilities. And then we'll add a post to the database with some content and a user ID that belongs to a different user. Now, when we run our test suite, this data will automatically be configured in the Firebase app environment. Just be sure to pass these objects to the setup function. Now, when writing tests, I like to keep a convention of starting the wording with either deny or allow. In the first test, we want to make sure that the database denies when reading an unauthorized collection, and that includes admin users. To run this test, we'll create a reference to a collection that doesn't exist in the database. Even though it doesn't exist, Firebase should still deny it because we don't have anything to allow access to this area of the database. Then in our expectation, we can await a call to assert fails. Assert fails comes from the Firestore testing library. And when you make a call to the database inside it, it will expect Firestore to deny that operation. In this case, we can attempt to read by calling ref.get. Before we run this test though, I'm going to add a flaw to our security rules. If we go into the rules file, I'm going to allow reads on all documents across the entire database. If we open up the command line and run npm test, you can see we get a failing test, expected result to fail, but it succeeded. Now, if we go ahead and delete the allow read line that we just added and then run our test again, you'll notice we get a passing test. That's because the database denied that read, which is the behavior we're looking for. Now, moving on to our next role, we want to make sure the database allows the admin to read unpublished posts. This time we'll make a reference to the mock data that we created in the database for the ABC post. In the expectation, we'll await assert succeeds. Unlike the last example, this assertion is looking for the database to allow that operation. When it comes to testing rules, there are times when you want to make sure the database is allowing an operation and other times where you want to make sure that it's denying an operation. An effective test suite should have a combination of both. Now for our final test, we'll perform a write. We'll make a reference to that same post, but this time we'll run ref update in the assertion. It's obviously very similar to the previous example, but when you run a write, it's important to keep in mind that the mutations you make to the document will affect future tests. Therefore, when you run your test, try to minimize the amount of mutation you're doing or isolate those operations in different test suites that start with a fresh database. So that's how you write a basic test for your Firestore rules. But in some cases, you might be faced with a rule that you just don't understand. It's not working the way you expect. Let's see what other tools we have to dig deeper into the behavior of a rule.